boogeyman of health care reform 2009 has been identified by the GOP, and it's nothing less than a Trojan horse bringing in socialized medicine. Uh, here we go. In our third story in the countdown, President Obama addressed the latest fear-mongering today, but the question must be, and it has been raised, do Democrats even need to compromise with the party of no at all? Bill Maher joins us in a moment. Today, before the American Medical Association, a sometime critic, the president's 54-minute speech on health care reform was both policy and politics. Each time an uninsured American steps foot into an emergency room with no way to reimburse the hospital for care, the cost is handed over to every American family as a bill of about $1,000. It's reflected in higher taxes, higher premiums, and higher health care costs. It's a hidden tax, a hidden bill that will be cut as we insure all Americans. So when you hear the naysayers claim that I'm trying to bring about government-run health care, know this, they're not telling the truth. What I am trying to do, what I am trying to do, and what a public option will help do, is put affordable health care within reach for millions of Americans. The so-called public health insurance option would give consumers a choice other than private insurance, but it is the great demon, according to the GOP, a trick on the way to a scary single-payer system. The Senate Finance Committee's ranking Republican, Charles Tweeter Grassley, portraying it as the main problem for Democratic Chairman Max Baucus, quoting, The biggest challenge he has in his own caucus is that a large share of Senate Democrats really want the government to run everything. On the House side, Congressman Eric Cantor expected to unveil the GOP alternative in outline form on Wednesday. More deja vu all over again. All of it, more evidence that Democrats should take seriously the oft-repeated suggestion of former DNC chair Howard Dean, who says there should be no compromise of the public option. This is a compromise that's de designed to deal with problems in the Senate, mm. but it doesn't deal with problems in, in America. And I think it's time for the Senate to stop playing politics, do what has to be done. If the Republicans don't want to get on board, and they certainly have never done, look, the Republicans all were against Medicare when we put that in. If the Republicans don't want to get on board, then we can do this without the Republicans. Mm. And since the battle may again be won by 30-second TV ads, one connected to the DNC is ready to roll. It cites a recent poll. 62% of Americans supporting a major overhaul of health care and another new poll finding 73% of Americans do want that choice between private and public insurance plans. Let's bring in his promise, the host of HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher. Bill Maher, who will be performing at the Orleans showroom in Las Vegas July 3rd through July 5th, even though that has little to do with this topic. Good evening, Bill. Oh, you don't know about that. Okay. They both have to do with gambling. <laughs> <laughs> An excellent point to start with. Um, the overall picture here, health care again, Republican opposition again, uh, Democrats at risk of caving again. Is that the natural follow? Yes. Uh, you know, as you were just saying, I don't, I, or maybe it was Howard Dean who was just saying, I don't know why they need to get the Republicans on board. And it's uh, it's probably more the Democrats who are the problem. When I heard the president uh, get that round of applause there before the mm -hmm. AMA, that's when I knew we were in trouble. <laughs> because the AMA, of course, is a lobbying group. It's out for money, like every lobbying group. People think of it as your friendly doctors, and it's really not. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a lobbying group. And when he said, uh, I'm not out to install a government-run health care plan, uh, why not? Maybe our maybe our health care situation in this country would be as good as, you know, Costa Rica's or Morocco's. <laughs> yeah, that's, he was speaking to the second most powerful union in America behind the Baseball Players Association. But when he spoke out for the public option today, uh, while he did that and while he took, seemed to take a little bite, a little nibble out of the AMA, do you really think that he may particularly the president, may be willing to, to take an unnecessary compromise on this just for uh, some premise of bipartisanship or other reasons? What do you think? Well, I don't know if it's bipartisanship I'm so uh, concerned with as caving in to corporations and lobbyists. I mean, the track record so far is not good. You know, we, we did an editorial on our show Friday night. It was pretty hard-hitting about Obama not putting it on the line and standing up to the energy companies, the health care industry, the banks. 
And b previously, when I had um, criticized Obama in front of my, you've been on our show, mm -hmm. our very liberal Southern California audience, they were booing me. You know, my crowd in my studio <laughs> booing me, which is fine. But on Friday night, I was expecting the boos, and they weren't booing anymore. They were cheering. I think they're getting to the point where they're realizing, yeah, we still like Obama. He's our guy. We're glad he's president. Uh, but where's the beef? And, and it's easy to make speeches. What's hard to do is stand up against corporations. Corporations mm -hmm. and their incredible strength are what have ruined this country so far. And this president, we thought, might be the one to stand up to them. I'm losing, I'm losing hope. I still have audacity, yes. but my hope is fading. But when you consider this, I mean, there, it's 20 years of, well, Democrats will eventually get some sort of health care plan. Nearly 20 years. Their generations have grown up in this country hearing only, well, the Democrats will get this done. Oh, well, not now, because something else has gone wrong. Uh, it would seem that there's very little being required of the Democrats right now, and this would be the time to act, even if it is essentially by the fiat of the people who won the elections. Exactly. That's, that's one of the points I was making uh, on our show Friday, is if not now, when? First of all, historically, presidents have to do it, have to make their hay uh, in the first year or two. Uh, if he doesn't act boldly, I think he's probably going to lose the midterm elections. Then he'll have less Democratic support than he even has now. But the Republican Party is at its weakest point. If he can't shove some progressive legislation down their throats now, I don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I was saying that what he needs to do is get a little George Bush in him, mm -hmm. personality-wise. Now, Bush, of course, as we all know, had horrible ideas about pretty much everything. But he was pretty good about... About when he wanted to get something to, to be done, he got it done. You know, nobody was looking to go to war in Iraq, which was, of course, a horrible idea. And yet he pushed that through. Uh, and, and I think Obama needs a little of that, a little of, I'm going to get this done. I don't care who's with me. I don't care uh, who I'm going to upset. I don't care what kind of popularity I'm going to lose over this. But I'm going to push this through, and I'm going to do it now. And I'm going to do it in full measure. And I really haven't seen that mm -hmm. from this president on the issues that matter the most, which I think are how to deal with the banks and Wall Street, energy legislation, and health care. Yeah, the last president thought 2004 was a mandate. It looks like this president is not sure that 2008 was a mandate. Right. Uh, I mean, if, if Bush could go to war in Iraq when nobody was thinking about it, how come this president can't get through something like health care reform uh, in a way that the people really want uh, when people are actually for it? Uh, uh, you know, again, this speech to the AMA, nice speech, but he did leave out the important part that the AMA has been the major stumbling block to all sorts, to all the health care reform we've tried in this century. They, they, they were the ones who stopped uh, universal health care going into Social Security under Roosevelt. They fought tooth and nail against Medicare in the 60s. Remember they hired Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. to record an album talking about the horrible specter of socialized medicine, which makes it sound like Stalin himself is going to put on the <laughs> rubber glove and give you a prostate <laughs> exam. They fought Clinton's uh, plan. You know, they're not your friendly doctors. Uh, they're a union, like you say, and yep. a powerful one, and uh, they're not your friends. Well, at the current cost of prostate exams, there are a lot of people out there who wouldn't mind Stalin stopping by. Bill Maher is the host of, uh, of Real Time <laughs> on HBO. Always a pleasure, sir. Thanks once again. Thanks, Keith.